How will the proposed rulemaking impact smaller financial institutions? Well, thank you for the question. And, you know, <clears throat> CBA represents primarily institutions over $10 billion in assets. So we, you know, are, are going to be directly exposed to this rulemaking. And what, we've got 10 years worth of data now to go back and say we know what happens. Last time the Federal Reserve reduced debit interchange by 40% and consumers saw their free checking account access costs go up by about 30%. We this is study after, by the way, this is study after study that shows this happening, is absolutely. it not? Absolutely. By yeah. the Fed, by the GAO, by yeah. academics, uh, and smaller institutions also felt that impact. It was a direct impact on their, act, uh, on their ability to offer free checking accounts as well because they saw uh, revenue decline about 30% as well. So it, you know, we can carve out small institutions, and, and I know it might be politically savvy to do that, but people still feel it. Um, as well as well, there's there's this kind of wink and nod with the regulators. You know, they kind of wink and nod and say, you know, this is a good idea to comply with this because sooner or later it may come to where you have to. So it's that's kind of the way they operate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll yield back the rest of my time. Gentleman yields. From Missouri, Mr. Luchtemeyer is now recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I know both many of our members have been talking about junk fees. Let's let's define junk fees, what it really is, and where it really came from. This came from Director Chopra. He doesn't have authority over certain things, so he makes up this word junk fees and throws everything in this pile to now have coverage for himself to go out here and use UDAP to be able to go investigate these things. This word is made up. It doesn't have any basis in, in the financial services lexicon, and it's not legally enforceable. It is a made-up word, and now it's become a talking point for the other side. This is nonsense. This is how far the CPB has gone to extend their own authority over things they have no authority to do. And while we're talking about politicization and financial regulation, this is the, the paramount example of that. Um, you know, my good friend from California talked about the $17 billion that the CFPB has recovered. I would call it extortion money, because if you look at where most of it came from, it's extorted from the people that, uh, they were, that made the payments, which is not the way that this, op this government should operate. That being said, lots of stuff to talk about today. Uh, the CFPB has proposed to, uh, to replace a credit card late payment fees rule that was created by the Bond Administration with a new approach that will radically reduce the incentive for consumers to pay on time. In fact, the CPB admits that more consumers will pay late, leading to more late payment fees being charged. The CFPB states in the proposed late, fee, uh, late payment rule, I'm gonna quote, in developing this proposal, the Bureau recognizes that late fees are a cost to consumers of paying late, and a lower fee amount for the purpose, or for the first or subsequent late payments might cause more consumers to pay late. Ms. Harmon, what do you think about that? So in this uh, challenging time that we all live in, life happens and there will be people that pay <laughs> late fees, no doubt. Um, our fees and our credit union and all credit unions as well as all financial institutions are highly disclosed, regulated, transparent, and a member knows what they are doing just like with the overdrafts. We have members require Quest overdrafts, and we see in their transaction history that they will move to another institution to get their overdrafts or to a payday lender or less desirable option. 
Um, we have members that come in and talk about how pleased they are, how thankful they are to have overdraft. And um, a recent story that came from a team member is a young mother came in and had to choose between feeding her kids and paying the light bill. And when we reminded her of the overdraft that was available to her, you could see her light up. And she said, I don't have to make that choice. Yeah, so I, can again, tell you, I can tell you from being in the business, you know, people appreciate the fact you don't return their check. They will pay for that service. It's like any other service that you provide. They don't want that check uh, returned because it's a negative on their credit. They would gladly pay an over, over, overdraft fee to be able to protect themselves and their credit. It's very, very, very common. Uh, Ms. Johnson, thank you for uh, mentioning my Secure Payments Act. Um, I'm worried about the Federal Reserve's uh, shoddy proposed regulation II rulemaking and its impact on smaller financial institutions. As you're aware, when the debit interchange cap was originally implemented, it led to a reduction in debit interchange at institutions that were under 10 billion assets and therefore exempt from the cap. These small institutions already struggle to break even on debit product offerings and are the least able to absorb losses in debit interchange revenue. 